Hi, this is Makers Ask and this is Blue Reed. Uh, today is the exciting finale of the three-part series that I'm calling Going From Concept to Completion of a Painting. So this is the most exciting part where the painting happens. So um, mostly I'm going to uh, let you view the entire process of painting and then I'll speed it up really fast otherwise you'll be here for many hours. Not that that's not exciting. It's exciting for me. I can't be excited for you. Um, but before I get started, I wanted to tell you a few things that, that helped me along the way. So I've already, hopefully you've seen the other two parts of this um, little three-part series. Um, if you haven't, you might want to go back. We talk about concept and we talk about the drawing process. And uh, so just for a couple of minutes, I want to talk about painting. And I think the most important part of painting is, it, and I'm talking about representational painting, so I'm not talking about other kinds of painting right now, but um, specifically representational painting is more about convincing your viewer uh, that the thing is in, in, that is in front of you is, is real, so that you can, so they can get past it. What, what I find is, because what I'm doing is conceptual art, um, I want people to understand my concept. I want them to get my point of view. That's, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I talk in pictures. Um, and if I can, if I paint in a way that is convincing, then I judge that people get my message more clearly than if I am sort of unsuccessful at my representing a particular thing or an object. People get stuck in she can't paint, or, you know, that doesn't look like a person, or a skull, or whatever. And then they don't hear the message. So, and then that's unfortunate. You've lost your, your opportunity to convince somebody of your point of view, or to point something out, or to, to speak. So, it's like being interrupted. Who doesn't hate that? I have kids. I hate that. So, um, that's why. I, I think other kinds of art, like, um, you know, I... I mean, I could spend 14 years on one painting and really impress people with my skill. I could do that. But the, for me, the point of conceptual art is to bring something to light. And sometimes I feel like it's, it's I'm more successful at talking in art than I am in real life with my words. So <laughs> you can be the judge of that. Um, so that's why not to lose your opportunity. If somebody's gonna take a moment to look at my painting, I, I don't wanna lose that opportunity to uh, bring something that's important to me into their awareness just because I wasn't very successful at, at the painting part. So I don't hold the opinion that I need to be the very best painter in the whole wide world and impress you with my amazing skill and, you know, cause then actually what you walk away with is, wow, She's amazing, I wish I could do that, which is not actually my bent. I'm not out to impress you with my skill. I actually want to, I want you to feel something or think about something or whatever. So that's my, that's my particular point of view. So if you agree with that, then this is the right video with you, for you. If, if you're all about um, hyper-realism and maybe impressing with skill, this may not be the right video for you. Not that that's a bad thing. I'm not knocking that, uh, but it's not my thing. So I want to represent accurately enough to get my point across. And I don't want to spend 10 years on a painting because it's not, uh, that's not the puzzle I'm trying to solve. And, and I do think that painting is a lot about puzzle solving and um, construction and a lot about engineering in some ways. So with that in mind, most of painting to me is about constructing the form, is about turning that form and really showing the viewer this has, you know, three sides, four sides, this has a hole here that goes in and out. Beyond that is just playing with fun colors and entertaining the viewer along the way as you bring something important to light. So I like to paint as beautifully as possible so that people enjoy what the process, but um, the message may not be all that pleasant, but at least the conveyance of the message can be a pleasant one. And you might, like they say, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. That's kind of my thought, is I want to paint as beautifully as possible because I want the viewer to enjoy the process. And it may be that the message is a little bit painful, um, and that's okay. 
that's okay. Some of artists like that. And some of artists just bring beautiful things to life. Um, some of what I'm doing, especially in this series of playing the devil's advocate, I want people to start thinking about what it is they are living and thinking about what they hold to be their truth. Because sometimes truth changes. <laughs> That's been true for me. You say, well, truth never changes. Well, my truth has changed a few times. <laughs> so whether I liked it or not, it's important to go back and revisit what you are, the path you're on and then what you're living. So, okay, too much talking. Um, so with that in mind, what I like to do with the painting is start in a very general way and work more and more towards specifics and details. I don't like to do what I tell my students a lot, don't start with the eyelashes or I might just call out, hey, that's, you're starting with the eyelashes. It just means don't begin with a detail, you'll shoot yourself in the foot. A lot of times people will create when doing a portrait or something, they make the most beautiful eyes but it doesn't like relate to anything else. It's just a beautiful eye floating in totally the wrong place. So I like to have people just uh, control yourself, regulate yourself to the point where you can work really specific, uh, really, excuse me, generally, and then together as a whole, bring it down. And within that, allow your eyes and allow the artist in you to just flow. And what I notice is I'll be painting up here and then I'll shoot down over here but I'm trying to still stay as general as possible in the first part of the painting process and keep my uh, contrast pretty high and pretty accurate. Like this skull is a white skull. So these blacks that exist here now, are not gonna be black because the contrast in my um, photography is not all the way to black in many spots. So I'm not gonna probably do black, but this is a very helpful place to start is sort of black on gray. And then I'll bring those highlights out. Um, I don't know how many hours this painting will take me, but there's a lot in this hat. I'm, I'm judging that probably this flowerful hat may be the thing I wish I hadn't set myself up for, but oh, that's a bad attitude, isn't it? Okay, so here goes nothing. Um, the first thing I want to do in representing accurately is really, really make sure that my values are set. So I spend the first 10 to 15 minutes here on my palette and I'll share with you. This is um, an old tabletop. I have two of them. Well, I have three, actually, I have four. Anyway, that doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I have two of them that I use at the same time because this one I use for um, all the colors that I will mix and I leave them on here and I tried to set up the camera so you could watch me do this and this, but then this ended up too small so I decided to not let you see that. It's gonna be a secret now. Now, anyway, oh God. Mm. Okay, this is my second one, big one. Same thing, I just paint the backs white with gesso or acrylic paint. And then you can see it's like a rainbow. I like to set it up the exact same way because I'm an erotic fiend. And uh, <laughs> if, my, if my tools go in the same spot every time to look for a lizard crimson, that's, I like that, I have to think less. So when I'm thinking while painting, it ends up a mess. I want to be in my feeling body while I paint. It just, it's, it's intuitive. That's ideal for me. Uh, if I'm thinking about what to do, I'm probably in my left brain and that's not where I paint best from. That's not where the artist in me lives. So, uh, mixing up colors takes a long time. It's not a, new artists seem to think it just goes together really fast, but what I will do is set out at least, well, I do about nine values, especially if I'm doing a human face or in my case, a doll face or whatever. There's like nine colors that I'll start with like flesh tones, um, and they'll be like flesh colors from highlight, mid-tone, and shadow, and then there'll be like some bluish ones, or some lavenderish ones, or some greenish ones, or some yellowish ones. Those usually, I end up with a lot of colors before I start, so that I don't have to think about mixy, mixy, mixy. And from there, I will do a lot more mixing. So my pieces are full of color, and I love that but that's not what turns a form. Color is not what convinces a viewer that that thing or whatever it was is, was in front of you. Um, it's value that will do that. So value being light or dark. Um, so that's what I wanna do on this. Now this is a skull. Skulls don't have tons and tons of color. It will have more color when I'm done because I like color. But mostly it's gonna be creams because that's the color, the natural color of the skull. And then this hat, I've got my 
scrap, my photography here that I took. Talked about that in one of these videos too. Um, so I'll be starting with this, but it's going to change a little bit. Um, I'm going to do kind of grandma-y colors, golds and greens and mauves. It's my intention. Sometimes things change. We'll see. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I want to say before I start? No. Okay. All right. So here we go. And I'll see you when we're done.
Okay, I think I'm done, but I'm going to take a step back and see if it looks finished from far away. Yeah, I think it looks good. So convincing, but still painterly, open to interpretation. And uh, so now there's just a signature and that's it. So after I put the signature on, and the signature is important to me to be small and in the lower right hand corner is traditional. And um, I think a small signature is really powerful because if your signature is, is huge and red and in the you know, middle of the painting, then that is the painting. And uh, for me, the signature should be something they have to go look for. Otherwise, to me, it takes away from the painting itself and the concept. So I want to keep my signature small, but if you're looking for it, you ought to be able to find it in the right spot, which to me is in the lower right-hand corner. And if it takes away from the painting being in the lower right-hand corner, then I move it. Something else is going on in that part of the painting. So, you know, be open to it, but big, huge red signatures to me smack of amateur. So I try to avoid that. Uh, and the other thing to keep in mind is uh, art is great and you can be as creative as you can possibly be and that's awesome. And in the end it's a product and it has to go into a store or gallery to be sold. So it has to be as high quality as a product. And that means that if you're using a cradled panel like I am, do something with the sides. Either you paint or a wrapped canvas, you paint around the sides or you frame it. It should be dent free, scratch free bump free and perfect. Just like if you were to buy an apple in the store, you don't want a bruised one. If I expect people to spend thousands of dollars on my artwork, it needs to be in perfect condition. So that's an important thing. I've heard. Okay, so that's the end. So we've gone from concept to completion of a painting. Congratulations, you watched the whole thing. <laughs> this is Makers Ask and I'm Blue.